That's all to the song. Help me sing that. Come on. Jesus. My God. Jesus. Something happens when we call your name. Let's take it up. Come on. It's Jesus. Come on, sing it. Jesus. Something happens. Something happens when we call your name. Oh, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because in the presence of the Lord, anything can happen. In the presence of the Lord, anything can happen. In the presence of the Lord, anything can happen. In the presence of the Lord, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Whew. Get your Bibles if you would. I'd like to. How many people can feel the presence of the Lord in such an awesome way today? I know I can. His presence is in this place in such an awesome way this morning. I am full. I am full because of his presence. I want you to go with me to a familiar passage of scripture I brought about something on yesterday I attempted to and I want to go back to the scripture that he gave me and I don't know about you if there's any ministers, preachers in the house today, of course, there is. And sometime you minister something and, and in your ministering, you're moving in the faith of God and you're moving based upon what you know God has given you. But then you go home and after getting 
back into the presence of the Lord, he confirms to you that what you were saying, it is the timing of the Lord for you to say it. And so last night, I began to talk about the power of revelation. And I'm going to try to walk this through today because times have changed and we are no longer living in the days of just having the scriptures read to us without the manifestation of the scripture. We are not in the days anymore of us being just inspired by what they did of old. But there are people right in this room, and I do prophesy that because I know it, that there are people right in this room that God would use you to do mighty exploits. My God. And when you say amen, I want you to say amen not just because you know it, but say amen as if I know that I'm one of those persons that you're talking to. Yeah. Now let me get the third group of amen people. I want you to say amen as if you yourself have had some experiences that you cannot even explain. That even if you tried to, people would think you were crazy. I want to hear those people say amen. Okay, now we're working with something because I know now that the generation of this hour is about to move into those demonstrations and those manifestations of the glory of God. And watch this. And we will move into those without title. We will move into those not because you are a bishop, not because you are an evangelist, but because you are a servant of God that have been through enough keenness. Come on, somebody, that you recognize your nothingness. How do I get a manifestation from God? I get a manifestation from God when I recognize my nothingness. When I seek God for my nothingness. And he said... And I'm not going to be before you long, but I got to, I got to re-show some things that I showed you yesterday. It says in the book of Mark, the fourth chapter and the 22nd through the 23rd verse. Things are hidden temporarily only as a means to revelation. For there is nothing hidden except for it to be revealed. Nor is anything temporarily kept secret except in order that it may be known. Now that scripture right there is a powerful thing. I shared with somebody that the Lord spoke something to me that I had not ever heard before. And as simple as it was, yet by the same token, it appeared to be complicated to me. He said, do you not know? He said, I want you to believe me. And I said to the Lord, I do believe. He said, I want you to believe me. And I said, God, I do believe that you are God. He said, no, you are an example of the scripture that said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I said, what are you saying to me when you say believe? He said to me, people think in religion that they can just believe God. Have anybody ever told you to just believe God and you're looking at them like, you don't even know my circumstance, so how can you be telling me just to believe God as if it's that simple to just believe God? But what he revealed to me is that nobody can on their own accord believe God. You are Call to believe God. I just said something right there. You are called to believe God. In other words, watch this. Believing God is a gift to you. And if you're not called to it, you will never be able to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. If you're not called to believe God, you can't believe God. 
you can have hope. But hope and belief is not the same thing. You can have a hope that something will happen and something will take place. But when you believe God, when you believe God, when you believe God, you believe God when you are looking at circumstances and nothing seems to be what it should be. You are, listen, you are believing God against all odds. You are believing God against everything that your natural mind is telling you. When you believe God, you are not shaken by what anybody say. When you believe God, you are not moved by what you see. Watch this. When you believe God, you're not even moved by some of the crazy things that you say at times. Are you hearing? me when you believe God it is something that causes you to activate yourself even when you are standing in the face of opposition when I believe God when I believe God and so I asked the Lord one day I said God what are you talking about things are hidden temporarily as a means to revelation for there is nothing hidden except for it to be revealed I said, well, how does, a person, how does a person start to believe God? I showed you some things last night on the television screen, but I had to say, I had to go back and say something else to you about that. The point that I wanted to make about that is that when it's time to believe God, when it's time to believe God and you are called to believe God, and I said it before and I will say it again, that there must be, there must be, and this is the generation that tries to avoid that. This is the generation that tries to avoid, listen to me, that tries to avoid it because what we do is, and watch this, what we do is we pray out of it. We pray out of it. We pray out of our gift of revelation to believe God. Do you not know that? We are the generation that have been taught and we have been trained that when things are, 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 are going wrong, the first place that we go to, and I'm go listen, I'm going to mess with some theology right now. The first place that we go to is Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We go to devil, I bind you. We go to, you know what, the enemy has done this thing. Come on, somebody. But we never bring our minds to the fact that everything about us is being used by God to bring us to revelation. And so what the enemy wants us to do is spend time rebuking him instead of spending time asking God to reveal to us what it is you're trying to say in this situation. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? So then now we are being trained to be devil seekers instead of revelation seekers. Now we are being trained to pay more attention to the pain than we do to the power. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Now we're being trained that everything that the devil does, everything that he does, he's coming to attack me. He's coming to attack me. Watch this. When I, when I first went through my experience, I said, he's coming to attack me. And so when I started losing everything, people started saying, this is the attack of the enemy. <laughs> and then when, when it got worse, they said, this is the attack of the enemy. When I couldn't go no further, they said, this is the attack of the enemy. When I couldn't figure it out. My body was sick. They said it was an attack from the enemy. And God began to say to me, if all of these things are perfectly in order, if everything about your life is perfectly in order, when will you ever have the tenacity in you to seek for revelation about who God is? I, I, wait, 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 wait. I'm talking right now. Because, because some of us have associated God with good stuff. We have, we have associated the fact that I'm blessed because I have things. I'm blessed because, watch this, I got favor from God. So now we categorize and we split the kingdom by saying that the people that don't have much is not blessed. And the people that do have are blessed. People don't frighten me. They don't frighten me. People don't frighten me. I don't want y'all to be too concerned about people coming at me because the devil really don't want none of me. He really don't. All that that y'all be seeing where people be jumping up and whatever, whatever, they, they jump all up and you, you ain't got to protect me from nobody. 
Are you hearing me? Because I invite the enemy to confront me. I seen the real devil. I'm not hearing y'all. I showed you on the screen. I seen the real devil. That ain't no devil. That's just a show out spirit. People that be wanting to, people that be wanting to show out. Them ain't even no real demons. Come on, somebody. Come on here. I said they're not even real demons. It's not even real. I'm not hearing y'all. It's a manifestation of distraction. It's not even a real devil. Come on, somebody. Because when a real devil want to do some damage, he don't, watch this, he don't jump at you in a service that got 6,000 people in it that's got the Holy Ghost. And that's how I know it's not the real devil. Who am I talking to? Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Come on here, somebody. We got security in the house of God. But I'm going to tell you what my security is. The fact that I pray. The fact that I walk in power. The fact that no weapon that's formed against me shall ever be able to prosper. Somebody better open up your mouth and say something. Because what the church has to do, we have to make up in our mind. Are we going to be human? Or are we going to be spiritual? I'm not hearing y'all. Somebody say something in here. Are we going to be human or are we going to be spiritual? Which one are we going to be? Which one are we going to be? Because one minute it's all God. One minute the Lord can do anything. The next minute, you know, God can fix it and God can work it out. And then the next minute call the police. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. One minute is this and one minute is that. And then the next minute is God, we're going to call you. But God said this is the hour that there can be no vacillation in the spirit and in the flesh. If you're going to walk in the spirit, then walk in the spirit. Who am I talking to? Because what? I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. It cannot be conquered in the flesh. Oh, I'm saying something. Nothing can be resolved in the flesh. <laughs> I had to learn that. No, it's not. Watch this. It's not an attack of the enemy. It's revelation from God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying I can't get no generation in here to talk back to me. I can't get nobody to talk back to me. I said, I said, it's revelation from God. It's revelation. Watch this. And the trick is not the attack. The trick is the attention that you pay to the part of the attack. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because we're so used to seeing that it's the devil. We don't see that it's God too. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Because guess what? Out of everything that I have, out of every place that I've been, out of all that I've done, and I'm going to say something here that's going to help you. Out of everything that I had, out of everything that I've done, out of all the fasts that I went on, out of all the time that I prayed, out of all the shut-ins that I went on, what I got from God in the hour of tribulation, I I didn't get it in a fast. I didn't get it in a long prayer meeting. Are you hearing me? I got it in the fellowship of my suffering. Who am I talking to? We want more of God. But nobody wants to experience the glory in suffering. There's a, there's a, there's a, wait a minute. There's a, there's a, there's a glory. I, 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 I can't explain it to you. I, I, I can't explain to you that, that during the worst hours of my life that I would, hear, I would hear God speaking things that he's never spoke before. Wait a minute, wait, wait. And watch this. And I would hear the Lord. It says, it says, what is, watch this. What does revelation do? Revelation, watch this. Revelation has to be sought. Watch this. In the midst of, uh, listen, discernment and in intuition. And then I said, God, what do you mean by discernment? He said, he said, watch this. He said, he said, intuition is when you have the ability to rightfully judge. Discernment is when you cannot judge what it is, but you have been given the ability to know which direction to go in. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing because just because you don't know what to do, that means you don't know where to go. I'm not hearing you. And when you walk in God, and when you walk under the anointing of God you may not know what to do you may not know what it is but your job is not to just ask God what it is your job is to ask God now which way are we going from here God I already know where I am but I need you to tell me where do I go from here I'm not giving y'all because no matter what it looks like you on your way somewhere you might be sitting still it may look like ain't nothing going on but there there is movement in the power of God. He is shifting you to a place.
Christ you've never been to before. I said, I said he is shifting you to a place you have, you have, wait a minute, wait, 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 I got it, I got it, I got to deal with a couple of things right now before, before I finish ministry. Huh. Revelation without movement is nothing revealed. Okay. I'm going to say that again. Revelation without movement is nothing revealed. You see, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you a prime example. Last year, they gave me back my house. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. They gave me back my house last year. And when the man said, Dr. Bynum, you can have your house back. Watch this. And I praise God. And I testified that God gave me back my house. In the midst of it, they got rid of him. And they sent me a letter and said, we done sold your house to another bank. And your house is gone. So what happens when you see the problem, but you got a revelation? What happens when what God said starts to go in the opposite of what God said? No, I wish I had a church in here today. What? Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. That may not be everything. But what happens when the Lord has spoken something to you in revelation and then all of a sudden you see it go the opposite way? I'm not giving nobody to talk back to me. Then that is the hour that revelation will begin to tell you what to do. And revelation told me, don't go by another house. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. So then I started, watch this. So that's when I started saying, Lord, what is it that you're trying to do? Well, why won't, why won't some of this change? And God, listen, God said to me, if you go back and look in the scripture, look, look. When you go back and look in the word of God, everybody that you will see that had a supernatural encounter with the presence of God was people that was in trouble. I, 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 I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Somebody better say something right there. When Jacob was in trouble, when Jacob had done everything he thought he could do, come on somebody, God waited until he sent his family across the river. He waited until he sent his wealth across the river. And then the scripture said, when he had nothing left, that's when God showed up and he had an encounter with God. Who am I talking to? Some of us. Want the encounter, but we do not want the process that it takes to get us there. It's all quiet in here. It's all quiet in here. I said it's all quiet in here. No, it's quiet in here because, Lord, thank you. It's quiet in here because we got a lot of people that go to church, but we got very few people that are spiritual. We got a lot of people that are satisfied with your Christian walk. But in the next dimension that God is operating in, he's not just calling for a Christian. He's calling for a Christian with power. I'm not hearing y'all. He's calling for a Christian that know how to walk in authority and power. In authority. Watch this, watch this. In authority. And power. So let me describe us. So we're the disciples. We're the disciples. Watch this, people. We're the disciples. I got to walk all over this place today. We're the disciples. And let me describe the disciples. Jesus came on board. And Jesus, he was healing the sick. And he was raising the dead. And he was casting out devils. And he go to, he go to disciples. We were Jesus. We were Jesus. And I'm going to paraphrase it to us. If Jesus were to walk in this place right now, and he had 12 disciples with him, and the disciples got there before Jesus, 
and, and the place is packed like this. They would say, excuse me, we need some seats. Because we were Jesus. <laughs> I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. And they said, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. But we crowded, but we with Jesus. And y'all expecting Jesus to come and we are his disciples. So they kept saying we were Jesus. And he would heal the sick. Watch. And they got so bad at it that when the woman was sick with the issue of blood, they started speaking for Jesus. Don't touch him. Don't touch his robe. Don't mess with his stuff. Don't do that to Jesus. No, you can't talk to Jesus. Have y'all ever had that experience? I have. Have you ever had that experience? Because I had to get on my staff about that. I said, you're not me. You don't tell people what I won't do. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all ain't saying that. You won't tell people who I won't heal. That's what Jesus was saying. No, you don't talk for Jesus. Sometimes people end up walking in your authority. And that's what the disciples was doing. Don't put your hands on him. But that's not what Jesus said. That isn't even his ministry. So here she is. Trying to touch him. And they saying, don't touch him. And when, he, when she did, he said, somebody touch me. So, so Jesus said, and I believe this in my spirit, and this is my own thoughts about it. When I kept reading about the experience of the disciples, I can imagine Jesus saying, y'all really think y'all know me. I'm not hearing nobody. Y'all shout in church because I paid your light bill. And because, Lord Jesus. Y'all shout in church because he blessed me with a house and I ain't no way in the world I should have got there. And that's it. Oh, look at what he did. You, you, come on, you bless the Lord because, you know, he healed my baby. And God, oh my God, he blessed my grandmama. But Jesus said, you know what? I tell you what. They came to Jesus and said, and you can hear it. You can hear his agitation. Go back and read it. When they came to him and said, Master, there's people all out here and they're hungry and, 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 and they need something to eat. You know what Jesus answered and said to them? You feed them. Is there anybody in here besides me can hear an attitude? Is there anybody in here besides me that can hear? Why would Jesus say, well, then go and feed them. And they just said, Master, people are here and they don't have nothing to eat. Then you feed them. And they said, Master, we can't do that. He said, a very good point taken. When is the church going to come to the place where they say, Master, I can't do it? I, I'm, I'm. No, no, I didn't hear nobody say, when are we going to get to the place where we can come out of our spiritual arrogance to say, I can't do that? Uh -huh. Lord, I know you want me to do that, but I can't do that. Lord, I know this is what you called me to do, but I can't do that. I don't have the means to do that. I don't have the connection to do that. I don't have the wherewithal to do that. I don't even have the faith to do that. I can't do that. And that's when Jesus said, okay, well spoken. Because what I want the church to realize is just because you have church doesn't mean you can do the supernatural. I'm looking for somebody to say, God, I want to operate in power. But as of now, I can't do that. So what he did was, he said, all right, mother, he said, I'm, I'm sick of y'all. So I want y'all to go on across on the other side. I'm going to show you something today. I got something to show you. I want you to go on across on the other side, and I'm going to pray. And this is what I believe. I believe Jesus headed up there, and here they all happy. We got 12 baskets left over. Everybody been fed. And, ooh, Jesus did another miracle. Ooh, he, and I know, I know because we do it. You know when the service is over and it's powerful and you start talking about wasn't the power of God. I know the disciples say, wasn't that something? Oh yeah, with two fish and five little Did you see all them people he, he fed? And we had 12 baskets left over. And Jesus said, while you in all your excitement, I want you to go on, on across on the other side and I'll meet you. And I really believe this, y'all. I believe that when Jesus said, I'm going up to pray, he looked over there at them and just turned around and went, because some of y'all getting ready to get to know me. Uh -huh. you, get, uh -huh. you real happy in all the miracles, but some of y'all, one of y'all in that boat going to get to know me. You're not just going to follow behind me, but you're going to get to know me. And guess what? We have categorized Christianity as people that follow Christ, but he's saying somebody is going to get to know me. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. He says somebody going to get to know me in the power of my suffering, in the fellowship 
one of y'all going to know that I'm real. One of y'all going to know that I exist. One of y'all going to know that power can operate in anybody that is willing to get to know him. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm ministering the word right now. Watch this. And so they get out there and the storm hit and it's tearing the boat up. It is, it is demolishing the boat. And they start screaming, we gonna die. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Lord, help me, I'm gonna die. Lord, help me, they gonna put me out. And, look, and, 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 and it's as if God turned his back and said, let them put you out. And then, and then, and then he, watches, he watches our spirit to see if we mad at his decision. I'm not hearing y'all. God watches everything that happens to us to see if we're mad at, at his decision. Because when you're mad, you don't have a revelation. I'm not hearing y'all. Because you have, watched this, you have categorized God to the fact that that's the last car I'm going to have. You done categorized God to the fact that that's the last place I'm going to live. You don't know that a cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. You don't know that God is a creator. You don't know that God can speak and men live. And God can speak and men die. I just want to ask a question in this building. Where is the faith of the saints? No, because your faith is in what God can do. But the Bible said that I want the faith that was once delivered unto the center that says if he don't he's still my God. If he don't work it out, if he don't give it to me, I'm not giving you He's still my God. Faith in God is not Wait a minute, faith in God is not just, he can do that. Faith in God is he doing something greater when he don't do that. Uh, uh. I got my microphone out for a reason. I got my microphone out for a reason. And that reason is, I'm going to provoke you to praise God. Because what I'm trying to say to you is that when God gets ready to do something greater in your life, it will appear that he will ignore what you have asked him to do. He said, because I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. Are you hearing me? Which means what I'm doing, you ain't even thought about it. What I'm doing, it ain't even entered into your mind. Because, watch, because of what I am doing, watch this. I prayed, I prayed. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I prayed. I said, God, I want, when, when I got this man's tapes, I said, I want to, God, I'm praying for a manifestation. I'm praying, I'm praying, God, that you would, that you would allow me that you would open up the windows of heaven and that you would show me your glory. And all those years, all those years I prayed, all those years I prayed, and I was seeing the spirit, but people thought I was crazy. Because when I was saying, he's here, they, 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 like they didn't believe it. And, and I said, God, I, I, I need you, I need you to show me. And so one of my experiences, I was in my basement praying, and that's I normally I, I go down there and I pray, but I came upstairs that day and I was in the living room praying, and I had some people, some guests in the house, and I began to pray, and I began to call my, my voice just turned like a trumpet, and God said begin to call out the names of your loved ones that are distressed and bound up. And I, began, I can't even explain to you the sound that came out of my voice. And I began to shout for them. And when I began to shout for them, I looked up. And I saw an angel that looked to be about 14 feet tall. And he jumped in my doorway and spreaded his wings. And when I went to run around to where the kitchen is, another one was standing in the kitchen. And I said, ain't nobody going to believe me. But when I start shouting.
shouting like that. It was six people in my house. Two of them, three of them was downstairs. The others was upstairs in the bedroom. When the girl ran upstairs because they thought something was wrong with me, she opened up the basement door and it slammed back and knocked them down the steps. The other girl came from downstairs. When she got downstairs, she said the spirit of God slayed her out on the steps. And God said, don't come no further. And they said something was in this house. And I said, the spirit of the Lord was here. And what am I trying to say to you? You think that your suffering and your trials and your issues are just circumstances. But they are opportunities that God is about to give you to have a face-to-face encounter with God. Who am I talking to? I'm not talking about you knowing God. Because your grandmama said that you knowing God. Because your mama said, I'm telling you, it's time for you to know God for your Wait a minute. You know why Peter was able to say? You know why Peter was able to say? When Jesus said, who the men said that I am? Watch this. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something on the screen in a minute. Because when the storm starts raging and everybody starts screaming, Peter said, Jesus, is that you? He said, then if it is, then bid me to come. And now I want you to see this. I want you to see a man. I want you to see and visualize. The storm is tearing the boat to pieces. Now y'all, let your own mind help you with this one. Because my own mind helped me with this one. The storm is tearing a boat to pieces. And a man gets out of the boat. I'm gonna say, the boat is being torn to pieces. But a man gets out of the boat. I'm going to say it one more time. The boat is being torn to pieces. But the minute the man decided that he wanted to come into the dimension where Jesus was. The minute he stepped outside of the boat, he didn't just step on water. He stepped into a divine dimension that had never been experienced before. He was able to walk on water because he stepped in the sphere of Jesus. Who am I talking to? That's why I came today to tell somebody in this building that it's time to step up. And when you take that step, it won't be in your flesh. You're going to step in a dimension that you have never been in before. And you will be able to operate in the impossible. Um, um, in, the, in the impossible. But wait a minute. And the storm mother was tearing the ship up, but the storm didn't blow Peter down. Okay. okay. I can't get nobody to see that. I can't get nobody to see that. His eyes is what caused him to sink. That means while he was walking, the Bible didn't say the storm ceased. The storm was going on all around him. But Peter just kept walking. Are you hearing what God is saying? There is a dimension in God. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. That night, that night when I was walking, that night when I was ministering in Brazil, God took me up. I want you to go to the light over my head. I want you to see something. I got to explain this to you because we are there. God, if I don't get nobody but three people to believe me, we are there. I'm not hearing me. We are there. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't saying that. We are there. No, I know that we're there. I know that we're there with the day that I was driving 80 miles per hour on the expressway. And all of a sudden, my truck went out of control. And it spent three times across the expressway and ran head on into a brick wall. But before it hit, I saw a bean sitting down next to me. I'm not kidding, y'all. I had no seatbelt on. But when I hit the wall, my car was folded up and totaled. When the people came running, they said, ma'am, we're going to get your 
family out. And they said, do you know who was in the car? I said, I was in the car. They said, you just got out of that car? I said, yes, I did. They said, how? I said, I think I saw an angel. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. What you better recognize is there is a level in prayer that you can get to that will summon angels to walk with you, to talk with you, to be present at all times and at your command. At your command. At your command. So this, I'm standing there in Brazil and I'm sensing the presence of demonic warfare. And I said to the Lord, I said, God, I need to know that you're with me. And a professional photographer who takes pictures for the soccer teams in Brazil, who had a long lens that was about a $250,000 lens. He took the picture and that came over my head. Now, 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 now show the other picture where there is no... Do you see where I'm standing? I'm, I'm asking y'all a question. Yes. Do you see the square light over there? Yes. I'm asking y'all a question. Yes. Do anybody see a round light bulb anywhere? Oh. I'm asking you a question. Now go to the picture. Go to the picture. No light, nowhere. And then all of a sudden, I threw my hands up to begin to praise God and it moved. And God, hey, I'm on fire. And God told me to tell the people of God, you better know the power when you wave your hands. You better know the powers when you wave your hands. You can throw power. Go back to the first picture that was over my head. It was over my head because he was with me. I want you to see this. He was over my head because he was with me. But once you know that God is with you, now you got to use the power. Who am I talking to? And when I threw my hands up and said, God, let your glory be revealed. The light follow are you hearing me oh y'all waving your hands but you don't know what's going on right now you waving your hands but you don't know the power that's in the hands of the believer we are in divine manifestation we are in divine manifestations we are in divine manifestations oh Lord use me use me we are in manifestations of divine manifestations we are in the revelation of divine manifestations we are in the revelation of divine manifestations I cry Lord oh Lord use me I ain't never heard that song before he just gave it to me we are in the revelation of divine manifestations we are in the revelation of divine manifestations we are in the revelation of divine manifestation we cry oh lord oh lord use me So, so in the same meeting, watch this. God said to me, lay hands on the people. He said, I want you to get on your knees on the platform. It was a platform high like this. And the people start coming. And I began to lay hands on the people. And the Holy Ghost took me over to the point that I was hollering and I couldn't stop hollering, preaching. And I was laying hands on the people. There was a young man in Boston He's Brazilian. He was watching by internet. He said, when you shouted, the power of God came through the computer. 
And he said it knocked me backwards. And he said, and I thought I was seeing things. He said it was a light that came out of the computer. He said, and God told me to grab my camera. He said, and I grabbed my camera. And I took a picture. And God said, now, take a video so people won't think that it was just a glare from the picture. And this is what came up. I'm here to tell you there's some people in this building that God is getting ready to take to Rams. That's what came out of the computer. And he said it knocked him back. He said, prophetess, I got knocked back so hard that I almost was slain under the power of God. And he said, then God told me, he said, I want you now to take your video camera out and video. And what am I getting ready to say to you now? I'm getting ready to say that every time you move your body, I hold up a shot. There is a force that moves with you. Who am I talking to? You are not just a human being. You are the anointing. And I'm a shot. Saying to you, somebody better give God a shout right now. Play the video. understand go back to the video of the lady because I want you to understand something that the power of the Holy Ghost I want you to hear this now this is gonna bless you that lady pulled on God because she had something going on in her life that only God can fix Now, let me make this clear some of y'all and I'm going to say this candidly. Some of y'all, what you're dealing with, the service can fix. Some of y'all, what you're dealing with, a good worship team song can fix it. I'm not, let me walk back here. I'm, I'm going to walk back here. And, and see, what I want y'all to stop doing... I want y'all to stop playing the Holy Ghost like where well, we don't shout like that. That ain't how I shout. Because you know what I found out? I found out that if Usher, if Usher came in this building and stripped his shirt off, y'all would scream. Men, if Beyonce came in here, y'all would scream. Now let me bring it on home. Forget about, forget about Usher and Beyonce. Let's just talk about the soccer game. You got men in here that's done tow up their living rooms on a soccer game. You got men in here that's done broke lamps cheering for a team. You got people in here that are paint half of their face one color and the other half another color. 
But when it come down to God, you want to act like we don't shout like that and all of that ain't necessary and all of that ain't necessary. Well, let me help you with something. What the devil has tricked you to understand is that when you shout, walls come down. That when you shout, something happens. When you shout, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a special anointing that comes along with people that shout. I'm not giving you a talk back to me. When you shout, demon spirits are driven out of your presence. When you shout, the power of God, it comes out of you like a mighty weapon. When you shout, there's a sword that sticks out of your belly because that's where the word is. Somebody give him a shout. Let me help you with this. I'm going to describe to you the difference between a shout and a holler. A holler, a holler is loud noise. I asked the Lord, what made the walls of Jericho come down? And he said they shouted. And I said to the Lord, they shouted. He said, but let me explain to you what a shout is. I said, what is a shout? He said, a holler is when people go, eh. He said, but when you shout, your mind got to go back to all the hell you've been through. <laughs> when you shout, your mind got to go back to the fact that you almost didn't make it. I'm not giving nobody. When you shout, you got to think about I came all this way in God and I'm writing my promise and I'm not going to give up. Now somebody in this building, give God a shout. Come on, you got to shout. You got to shout because the enemy don't want you to have it. You got to shout because you have to wall been through too much. You done been the hell and back. You done cried too much. Somebody shout! Hold on. I want you to see something. Now this is what I want to explain to you one more time. There was no light shining on this woman like that this woman got took down listen to me can you hear me in that balcony the reason why the reason why I just said can you hear me in that balcony because the Holy Ghost just said something is about to hit that balcony. Ah, oh my God! Hear my mama say it. I am a sinner. Hear my mama say it. Hear my mama say it. Something gonna hit that balcony. Wait, wait, wait. He said that woman that you're getting ready to see on this video. There was no light. He told me to run around the building and shout, come alive. And as I ran, before I can get around to the front of the building, the power of God fell on this woman. But what I want you to notice about her, she ain't doing like some of y'all. What I want you to notice, she not doing like some of y'all. Oh. For a Caucasian woman, she went for it. Because what she was saying to God, 
I know you moving in here, but don't miss me. I'm not here, nobody took me. Y'all better say something. What she was saying to God is why you moving up and down this road. I want you to understand that I'm desperate. Is there anybody in this building that's saying to God, I'm desperate for a mover. Who am I talking to? Is there, y'all wait, wait. I'm, 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 I'm asking. I got to ask this question before I show this video because the Lord told me to say this. And this is what he told me to prophesy, that there is a move of God that the Lord, let me tell you what I see. I see a move of God that's about to hit this property. And I see, and I see a move of God to the point that people are going to be all outside on the ground because there will not be enough room to hold them in this place. I see speakers. I see speakers put up outside. I see big television monitors outside. I see the police because he has to monitor the traffic because there's something that is going on that is out of this world. I see people that are stretched out face down on the ground. I see intercession that is going on. I see preaching that is happening. I see a Holy Ghost night where everybody got a refilling of the Holy Ghost. I see people slain out in this building I see the news coming I see the media coming and it's going to start it's going to start it's going to start as a two day meeting and it's going to go on for days and days and days and people are going to fly in and they're going to say that a move of God has hit London in prayer city it will be noise around there will be day service there will be evening service there will be midnight prayer all nationalities all denominations they shall come just the spirit of the living God shout shout is universal shout is not black shout is not white shout is not Indian shout doesn't belong to the Chinese when God says shout shouting means shout in every language in the world and when I get through playing this video the Spirit of the Lord said the minute you see where the power of God touched down on this lady and took her down God told me to prophesy this that the minute you see it on the screen you better start shouting because that's what just happened to London oh my shy that's what just happened to London God just engulfed London into the presence of the Lord God just engulfed London into a move of God are you hearing what I'm saying to you begin to roll the video get ready
Y'all act like, y'all act like I just prophesied something minor. I just prophesied that the next move of God overseas is going to hit London. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. It's going to hit London at Prayer City. No, you didn't hear me. God's going to bring pastors together. I said, God's going to bring leaders together. You better start opening up your mouth. Because your loved ones are about to be delivered. Crack cocaine is being broken now. Prostitution is being broken now. Drugs is being broken now. Sickness, disease, shout! into a trance God took me up into the spirit pastor and a man was sitting down the aisle and the night that I got up and the fire came from my hand my hand shook I couldn't even repeat that when I got up off the floor the power of God knocked me out I started walking in a trance like this eyes closed I passed by a man I was so drunk till my workers were holding my sides because I was going it was like I was my feet wasn't touching the floor that's what it felt like I passed this man and my hand my hand would flop down only on the people that God was giving me to pray for but it wasn't me they said I was going through the aisle and periodically my right hand would drop down and then my left hand would drop down in a flop my hand came down on a man to God be the glory and this man started screaming and ripped his shirt open and ran to the pastor and said when this woman's hand came down on me I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the fire is in my chest my he had a suit jacket on and a shirt I would have had to hit him like a mighty force in order for that to come up on his skin. He started screaming and saying, I just got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and I can still feel the fire in me. And God told me to tell everybody in here, if you dare to want to see the supernatural, if you dare to want God to use you, I'm not hearing y'all. I see it in the spirit. Some of y'all are going to walk in a hospital and everybody on the floor is going to be healed. I'm not hearing y'all. It's time for the phenomenon of the spirit of God to take place. It's time to make God out of all of us. It's time for God to make the devil out of the liar that he is. He doesn't have all power, but the authority is in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Shout for Jesus. I went is there anybody in here from Uganda raise your hands if you're from Uganda I went to Uganda and Jesus promised me that everywhere I go there would be a manifestation and he had me to take the shroud of Jesus 
and I started wearing it on my body in these handkerchiefs. When I got to Uganda to preach, the force was so great until I said, God, what are you doing? Are you with me? And the minute I heard his voice saying, I'm here in this building with you, I began to worship. Show one picture before that so they could see the two lights. I saw that they didn't see any of them. But what I want you to notice right here is I gave way in strength and I collapsed on the floor crying. And I said, Jesus, help these people because they want to be free. And I prayed this prayer. I said, put the affliction upon me. And my face became distorted and began to turn green on the picture. And he said, stand up because I'm in here. And I stood up. But what I want you to notice is all the black stripes are gone off of my robe. Now enlarge the picture. There he is. Enlarge it some more. The shroud of Jesus. There he is. Back it up a little bit. Back it up some more. Look at how big that is over the people that are standing there.
Jesus, I believe. Sometimes I can't see him. I believe, Lord. I believe. I will see. Though sometimes we can't see. Believe, God. Come on, receive. Hey, believe. Oh, receive. I believe, God. right quick begin to worship hurry up begin to worship he's anointing you to believe come on get your hands up that's it that's it receive it receive it receive it there it is man of God there it is 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 there it is, 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 receiving man of God, there it is. Come on, 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 30 more seconds. Come on, 30 more seconds. There's 
a wave coming in this place. There's a wave coming in this place in the next 30 seconds. You got to worship, you got to worship. Because that which you could not believe. He said, I'm anointing you to believe right now. Come on, he gave us that prophetic song. He's anointing you to believe. Come on, come on, come on. I receive. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Come on, come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Oh, da 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 we believe you though we can't trace you we walk in it we receive it right now in the mighty name of jesus we receive the anointing to believe 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 gave me this and I'm gonna tell you what he said to me there are nine people spoke to me before I left home and I was to bring nine shrouds I lay on them and I pray And I don't have anything to lose or gain by obeying God. All that you have seen on this screen in the last couple of days. Those of you that are purchasing the CD, I've given them permission to put all the pictures in the CD. You can put them in the DVD as well so they can have them. I gave them all of my pictures. Because it's time for us to believe God for the manifestations that we shall see in this generation. He spoke to me and he said, bring nine. There are nine business people in this building is what he said to me. And he said, You have sold. But God said I wasn't talking to you. I step into things. And he never gives me to do anything the same way all the time. I got up this morning. And he said, grab them. He said, because I'm talking to nine people. Nine business people in this building. He 
He said, I'm to speak what he told me to say. And when you come, I'm to hand you this shroud because I'm giving you a representation of the fact that what he has called you to do is because Jesus needed you to do it. There are nine people in this building.